Hello viewers, welcome back. Today we are going to model a wheel with five spokes. We are going to use a 2D sketch to build the cross section of the wheel, then revolve it 360 degrees. Then we are going to create a 2D sketch for the spoke pattern and use that to create the internal wheel pockets. Number of free CAD capabilities we are going to utilize are construction mode, B spline, symmetry, and polar pattern. So um, every, I'm going to go into details of each of them as we go along with this uh, model construction. So uh, be, be ready. So now, uh, first thing is, you know, as usual, we are going to create a new model and you know give some file name and save it so that's what i'm doing here right now so once you do that uh, i'm going to start with the sketcher in the workbench so go to the sketcher and then uh, pick a sketch i'm going to pick xy plane you can decide which plane you want to pick now i'm going to start something new here i'm going to start with a construction mode and create a construction line it's essentially a reference line so you know you could consider this as some kind of uh, you know this construction mode or construction line is more like uh, in a construction site you have these scaffolding cranes you know ladders etc those are like you know you are helping those are help you to build the uh, structure but they're not part of the you know overall finished product it's something similar here so this reference line is not going to be part of my finished model but i'm going to use it so that it gives me a size reference okay so 10 inches is what i put in here so i get a like idea how much what the size is because when i draw a sketch i want that sketch to be approximately the size of the final product because when i start putting constraints into that i don't want it to be moving all around so i here i'm starting with the polyline as probably seen you know multiple lines and connected to each other and then continue to get the the outer diameter of the wheel profile and then i'm going to put another line to represent the inner diameter of the wheel profile and then I'm going to take the B spline as you see and start drawing the, the B spline with you know, four or five control points so I'm going to put the outer spoke here remember this is just the cross section okay so and then I'm going to another, put another B spline with a uh, few control points but same control number of control points and then you know put that one over there and then have another polyline essentially the hub of the wheel and draw that and close the entire um, section so that way you have an enclosed volume that you can uh, revolve now in the lower left you see this is the fully constrained picture of the, the sketch now you see that that's a quite a bit of constraints i have now don't get overwhelmed by that because i'm going to follow a certain methodology in you know certain hierarchy in constraining i'm first going to do is look for coincidence on the connecting point so i have now i'm checking it to make sure all the points are coincident okay so there's no disconnected joints so that that's important because otherwise it is it, the model will not be fully constrained right so the next hierarchy is vertical and horizontal so i have seems like i got everything except one so i'm going to put one vertical there everything is now either vertical or horizontal uh, because i had the auto constraint on so that's why it is got everything got fully um, uh, vertical or horizontal now i'm going to put uh, in the hierarchical order tangency is the next but i don't have any tangency so i'm going to skip that and put angles so now i am putting angles on where i want these uh, features to represent so uh, i mean i have drawn a sketch hand freehand sketch to figure it out how, what my angles are so i'm putting them in so 
when you are building a model, you have something in your mind that you are going to translate into a model. So you know what the, your dimensions are, what your angles are. That's how you put this. Yeah, that's how you kind of create a model, right? So it's essentially that's what I'm doing here. I got, I think I got all the um, angles in now. Uh, I'm placing them, the, the presentation here and there, moving them. Now, next thing is to start putting uh, dimensional constraints. First, I'm going to put all the verticals. So everything that is uh, that I need to put dimensions on, I'm going to put vertical dimensions first and then come back and do the horizontal. So here I'm picking the, uh, the points I want to put the dimensions on and then I'm putting, picking the uh, center or the central axis and giving dimension. So these are kind of you can consider as uh, radii essentially uh, because uh, this is ultimately going to be a 360 uh, degree uh, wheel. Uh, it's, it's a circular wheel so that's why it's going to be uh, have, uh, you know radii. So these can, can be considered as radii so I'm going to continue to put these radii and then uh, once I'm done with all the radii I'm going to go and put the uh, horizontal width dimensions I would say there are going to be some here and there some uh, errors pop up but you know don't get disheartened by that continue in your model continue to put these dimensions as I'm doing now um, one thing that you have to keep in mind is why am I fully constraining this model now um, I'm building a parametric model. The parametric model, the meaning of that is essentially uh, you, once you fully constrain a model, a parametric model, you can go and tweak it. You can change dimensions here and there, change angles and do some stuff and, and still uh, your overall model, overall the, the shape will move only locally. Now, now, that depends on how many degrees of freedom your model has, but that's the concept, okay? Now, if you do not have a constrained model, you are kind of, a, in a, you know, you don't really have a good control how that would vary when you start changing dimensions, okay? So that's the purpose of fully constraining a model because, you know, that's the principle behind a parametric model. Now, um, you know, just a give a fact, uh, since I work on a, on, a, on a large design house, the, uh, you know, we typically have to fully constrain models all the time. That's the, you know, standard practice, okay? And then we lock the models uh, so that we, once we give the design to manufacturing, uh, you know, they don't kind of accidentally go and change stuff and we end up getting a model. Hey, we gave you this, but, you know, product we got was something else. Yeah, we don't want that happening, right? Nobody wants that happening. So you got to be, you know, make sure that what you uh, design is what you manufacture, right? And if you, if you are a hobbyist, you know, it's, you know, you're doing it, you know, some kind of a building, a, maybe a, a 3D printed uh, uh, some kind of object you want to make sure you know you get what you want out of it right so that's why it's good idea to always constrain it so now i'm putting all the um, horizontal constraint now if you look at the lower left where it's called solve a message you will see you know i started with you know your degrees of freedom keep going down and that's because you start constraining as you constrain your degrees of freedom for this structure to move around keep going down and ultimately when you get into the zero or when you get to the full constraint model your degrees of freedom will be zero because that's the intention now. Now, um, so you you keep adding these uh, you know constraints, and your degrees of freedom goes down. Now, here I have put all the horizontal, uh, you know, verticals and horizontal. I got everything, but see, I still see fifteen degrees of freedom left, and that's mainly because. Um, you know, I'm still adding some, you know, dimensional constraint, but 
the mainly because I have these control points on the B spline. So each one of them will have number of degrees of freedom. And so they can, you know, you will end up having large number of degrees of freedom uh, still remaining. So what you have to do is, uh, this is a you know B spline is uh, you know we call it the basis spline. It's it's a uh, you you when you have this control point you can move around get you a specific shape you want. So typically in a design house what happens is you have a underlying geometry you want. So and you you match that with this B splines moving and exactly match it. So that's what we are doing. So in this case, of course, I don't have underlying geometry. So I'm going to just move with the, the shape I want. And, and then um, with the control points, moving it to exact locations, I'm going to get that shape I want. So that, that's what I'm doing right now, uh, making sure the shape of the spoke is, is kind of, a, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, smooth and it doesn't it doesn't have any jagged areas um, and, and it is both the outer and the inner is kind of a, in a very, very smooth uh, flowing uh, you will end up with a, a structure that is um, you know looks pleasing to the eye now um, so how do you constrain these uh, control points. Now, the method I'm using here going to be I'm going to use uh, the block constraint. Now, so that's the block constraint. Okay, so it's it's what it does is it's essentially fixed all degrees of freedom. Now, in in uh, in FreeCAD it called block, but in if you look at Katia or UG Unigraphics it's more for like called a fixed constraint so that's essentially what it is so you're constantly putting a, a fully fixing those points so i keep putting them and then it's you know your degrees freedom wheel goes down and i think i have to put few more uh, block constraints to completely uh, you know complete the uh, model so yeah let's see i have two degrees of freedom left i don't know where it is so i'm going to click on that uh, that uh, two degrees of freedom hyperlink and when i do that i get this green line showing that okay something wrong with that green line so i'm going to i'm going to i think i'm suspecting that there is now somehow there is some disconnect so Let's move that line and see where is that disconnect. Yeah, there, there you go. So I don't know what happened. You know, we thought we had it fully co uh, coincident, that node, but it was not. So I don't know whether that's a bug in the free CAD, but you got to be careful. You see, you once you start constraining it, it may move around and it get disconnected. So you have to reconnect it. So that's that's a lesson. Okay. Now we got that done. We are going to go to part design. Now we have our constraint model, uh, and we are going to go to part design and create a body and put the sketch into the body. I'm redoing it again just to show you that. So you have to essentially create the body, drag and drop the sketch into the body because otherwise you don't have a body to, you know, revolve the sketch. So now the sketch is in white. We're going to pick that sketch and we are going to 3D revolve it. That's the, um, the command we're going to use. Now, by default, it revolved it around y-axis. That's not what I want. I want it on x-axis. So now I got the object I want. So that's the kind of uh, the object you end up with. Uh, now it looked like a wheel. I have to do some more work, but we have come into a, the end of our first video. In the second video, we are going to, you know, show you how to complete this model. So for so far now, uh, I have gone through the first two steps, and I have gone through some of the lessons. So be tuned to the next uh, lesson. Thank you.